Okay. So basically, today I'm going to be talking about this programming workout. Uh, no, let's not start like that. Uh, basically, every one of you knows that yesterday there was a party, and probably a lot of you uh, was there, and there is a high probability that this party is still going on. So, uh, before I start, I need to tell you that I'm very, very impressed by every single one of you at this aud audience. Well, and I tell you why. Basically, <coughs> uh, well, you were partying last night. You should be tired right now. You didn't get uh, this, this much sleep uh, last night. And probably some of you might have still a bit of hangover, right? <laughs> okay. So to make it, uh, to make the start better and to help you feel more happy and like dissolve this gloomy atmosphere, I would like to make a tiny experiment. So I need your help, but just a little bit. So could you please stand up for me right now? Seriously. Okay. <laughs> Just look out not to, not to spill your coffee. And uh, let's make two small things for all those impressive people around you. So look around. Do you see those faces of those people? Yeah? So first, let's smile at them. Yeah? And then let's give them a small applause. All right, seriously, you're awesome. Okay, so now you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the talk. <laughs> All right, so I want to share with you an idea of programming workout. And what I mean by programming workout? Well, it's basically a set of routines for developers to follow to become dev better developers. And if you follow them consistently and regularly, you should become better developer. So, yeah, I know it might be a bit cryptic right now and it doesn't make much sense, but please bear with me for the moment and I'll explain that in, in about 15 minutes. Okay, so who am I? My name is Michal Tashitsky. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub by Michal T. And first of all, I would like to tell you a bit about my journey as a software developer. So it, also, it all started uh, when I was in primary school and I saw the screen like that. Do, do you recognize that? Yeah. Okay, so it was Commodore 64 and my, I still remember my first, programming, first program I written. It was 10 print hello, 20 go to 10. So it was pretty complicated for that stuff. Well, then I, as, I usually type programs that I found in magazines, so that was not really a creative work. But since then, everything uh, went pretty quickly. So I finished, uh, yeah, I finished uh, study, uh, I got my master's degree in Krakow. I studied for a year in Scotland. And then I worked in a couple of corporations, like in ABB. I've been doing their uh, automated test of Java web services. Then in Sabre, I was working with uh, legacy code written in C++ but in 10 year, uh, in 10 year time period by different sets of developers. So it was pretty funny to say the least. Yeah, so then I managed to realize one of my childhood dreams. I became a game developer. So I was working in Scotland in Cohort Studios and in CD Projekt in, in uh, Warsaw. And I've made it, uh, I was working on uh, those games. This is the Motor Storm. Uh, it was the one of the first games on PlayStation 3. Uh, and the second one uh, was the Saints Row, which I was responsible for porting from Xbox to, to the PC. And after becoming a game developer, I decided to do something different. So I joined the Applicake. I'm with them with, uh, for about three years. Uh, I'm a senior race developer and uh, sometimes a project leader. And 
yeah, it's cool. I like there. I like being there. And a part of that, I'm also a member of a software craftsmanship group in Krakow. And we managed to uh, organize the first code retreat in Krakow uh, last year. We invited Corey Hines, the creator of, of the uh, code retreat <laughs> workshops. And we also uh, have been a part of the global day of code retreat. And I was honored to, to be leading the code, the code retreat during the global day uh, in Warsaw. So uh, it was a pretty nice event. It was happening in 90 different cities all around the world. Uh, more than 2,200 developers took part in that. And uh, it was happening pretty much simultaneously. Like, uh, it all started at 9 p.m., so every hour in different time zones, uh, code retreat started. So it lasted one day, and uh, it was pretty fun. We were Skyping with each other and connecting with uh, many developers. So why I'm telling you that? Uh, well, basically, during my journey as a software developer, I met a lot of programmers. And as you know, they're perfectly normal people. Yeah. So I, I've met a lot of good developers. I've met also some bad programmers, but I, I met also a few exceptional ones. So I haven't met this guy in person. Do you know that? Do you know him? Carmack. Carmack, yeah. So this is the guy responsible for, uh, for a lot of games that you might played or you might have heard of, like Quake, Doom, Wolfenstein, and so on, so on. So basically, he, he made a lot of uh, large part of the engines of those games. He's a really, really exceptional programmer. So the one you, uh, more of you might know is this one. Do you know him? Yeah, it's Gary Bern Bernhard. As I've met him in person as in Amsterdam, but I didn't know how much of a badass this guy is. Have you seen any of Destroy All soft Software screencasts? Yeah. So basically, if you haven't seen them, uh, it's just uh, pay this guy $9 a month and see all of them. Like, if you can't afford that, cancel your Spotify subscription and buy it. You'll thank me later. Like, this guy is a magician. So, and also, by working with other people, I've met some exceptional programmers. And they were not so different from the outside. But when you, see, when you saw them working, they were really, really good. They were constantly finding good solutions for the problems. They were working really fast. They were working really hard. And they were masters uh, in uh, different areas of being a developer. So they've mastered their tools. They've mastered the language. And some of them were exceptional, uh, good, fast, fast touch typers. So basically, when you see one, you look like that. So what you can say about them? That they are ta talented, right? Yeah, you can say that. OK, but that's, that's not all. That's, first of all, that's not constructive, because talent is something that you are born with or you are predisposed predisposed to, do, uh, to, to be talented in some case. And more of that, everyone has some talent. So uh, let's go back in time and imagine yourself in primary school. Do you, did you have some, uh, some subject that you felt you were talented? I did. OK, you did as well. Probably most of you did. Uh, was it a math, for, for example? Was math easy for you? Yeah, OK. So, and did it change when you went to high school? It definitely changed for me. For, uh, in high school, every, everything was like much harder. And I needed to work uh, to put some effort into uh, like to expand something that I previously assumed was my talent. So. Uh, what are other things that those developers could share uh, and that could define them to be exceptional? So I found that there are four things that let's, let's call them exceptional qualities. And it's 
clear vision, which, which means the clear idea of what do you want to be in the future, uh, what, who do you want to become, what do you want to uh, do, and how do you want to do that. So basically, you have to know what you are going to be doing and who you are going to be in a couple of years. Uh, they usually uh, can extract uh, smart goals from their vision, so they know exactly uh, what they need to do to move toward their vision. And also they know how to achieve their goals. And if they don't, uh, they at least are searching for the solution so they can find a way how to achieve them and move forward. And last but not least, they are really exceptional hard workers. And in my opinion, hard work is underrated. So we always say that, oh, programmers are lazy. Well, stop that. Lazy is not something that you, are sh you should be proud of. Basically, uh, we, we are programmed to be lazy. We have uh, new tools like our IDs, autocomplete, all, that, all those stuff, so we, we're f we forget how to touch type. Well, we forget uh, that we need to, uh, well, we, we don't need to remember the names of the variables. We don't need to re remember the, uh, the methods of the frameworks that we're working on because we have autocompletes. We have, uh, we have Google that we, we can find in information in a second. We have Stack Overflow, so we can ask for pretty much any, any solution for any problem, and we, it's really close to us. So we don't remember things. We just know where to look, the, look for them. And in my opinion, well, it's pretty good. It's, it's like, uh, mm, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I think uh, that we lose the ability to work hard. And uh, the, this is the ability that we don't want to uh, lose because it's, uh, it is helpful in all different areas of our life. So, um, yeah, just one more thing. Do, do you remember Agatha's lightning talk from yesterday? Okay, so uh, she was talking about Rails girls and she mentioned one of our colleagues, Basia. And she told, uh, told you about uh, that, that pretty much every one of our clients sends compliments of her work. And she also said that she uh, didn't know uh, why is that. So, well, I know why, uh, and I'll be happy to solve that secret. Basically, Basha is a really hardworking person. She, uh, she's able to do uh, a lot of mundane tasks really quickly and really good. And, well, she d doesn't get fed up with that. So it's, a, it's not a talent, it's really hard work. So it makes me think that hard work in well, in our lives, in our uh, work, is uh, pretty much a, a real deal. Okay, so now that we know what are the qualities of exceptional developers, uh, let's think how to become one. Is it easy? Yeah, maybe, but how to do that? Well, it's, we don't have a clear path to follow to, uh, to extend our abilities uh, w when we are looking at the developers. We don't know what, what, what they do. They usually don't know what they, what they did to uh, accomplish this. So let's think about another group of people that we think of as exceptional. And they might have a bet better structure of a way of uh, getting better. So let's think about exceptional athletes. Name your hero. Think about somebody uh, that you like, for, for example, good soccer player, or good boxer, or for example, good tennis player, or good runner, or good gymnast. Like, think about, uh, think about them and keep them in, in mind for a second. So, uh, I'd like to focus on one exceptional athlete. Do you know this guy? Yeah, he's governor of California, but you might know him better from this picture or this one. But let's get back to this one. <laughs> so basically, this guy is a really accomplished man, really successful one. He's the most known bodybuilder in the world. He's not doing that anymore. Well, he's in politics, but uh, he 
accomplished uh, pretty much everything he wanted to. Well, from what I read about this guy, he wanted to be uh, a president of the United States. So he's not yet. But, well, being a governor of California is pretty close in my book, right? So, basically, uh, he's a, an example of the person who fits perfectly the, the four qualities uh, that I mentioned before. So, he's a, he has a clear vision. He knew exactly who he wanted to be. He knew exactly he could extract the goals from, the, from his vision. Uh, so he became like the famous bodybuilder, then he became a famous actor, then he became a governor of California. How cool is that? Yeah, so, and first of all, he is a really hardworking person. So uh, from what I've read about this guy as well was that uh, people who went uh, to the gym with, with him uh, has seen his exceptional hard work. So. Yeah, and I think uh, this work ethic that he uh, exposed in the gym had a tremendous carryover to his life. So we have those exceptional athletes and think about those that you, uh, that you are thinking about. So think about your heroes. So uh, what we can learn from them? So we know that they uh, probably have those same qualities as exceptional developers but they also have a way to become better and they do it regularly and consistently. So what do they do? Well, basically they work out. They go to the gym, they train their muscles, they train their skills and they become better and they know how to do that. So why don't we try that? So how to work out? Well, it's pretty simple. You pick some exercises, you group them, you do them and then you rest. And then you just do it all over, all over again. So when to work out? Whenever you're comfortable. If you're a morning person, wake up, do some workout, or do, do some workout after work, like pick some, pick some part of the day that works for you. How often to work out? Well, a couple of times a week. And, and that's enough. How long? from half to one and a half hour, like it's one to three Pomodoros, if you know what I mean. And how? Now this is interesting. So when it comes to physical workout, there is a lot of theory uh, that defining how the workout should look like. So how, which exercises should you pick first, then what should you do? And it's really complicated things and you could read a lot of books, but uh, we can also choose some simple ones and, and start, start with that. So how could, we, uh, how could we work out our programming skills? So let's start by defining the programming skills that we want to train. So I would like to um, divide them into two categories, primary skills and secondary ones. So primary skills are those skills that help uh, directly achieve your goal. So it depends on your goal. But if you want to become a general good developer, I think those are pretty good picks. So it's debugging, test-driven development, refactoring, different paradigms. So object-oriented programming, functional programming, or procedural programming. Uh, techniques of dealing with the legacy code language mastery proficiency with framework, for example. Uh, if you want to be good with Rails, um, try to, if you don't want to forget how to generate a new Rails installation, practice that. Just do it a couple of times, delete your, uh, delete your newly created application, do it again, delete it, do it again, and that's part of your workout. So, secondary skills. Secondary skills are uh, something that also help us to become uh, better developers or help us achieve our goals, depending on what they are, but they don't help uh, directly. So, but they, if they are used uh, in a good way, they can accelerate the process of gaining uh, these programming skills that we want. 
So in my opinion, those are pretty important. So touch typing, uh, IDE mastery. So do you know all those shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts that uh, help you use your IDE faster? Do you know your shell commands? Do you know how to grab? Do you know how to awk, how to say, said? Do you know how to play dubstep using a same uh, command in, in macOS? Uh, source control. So do you know how to reflog uh, a Git repository? Do you know how, how to cherry pick? Can you do that without a manual? And mouseless navigation. So can you resize all the windows by using only keyboard and so on, so on. So in general, it's tool proficiency and quick reading skimming is is important, but I think like everyone on the internet can do that pretty much efficiently. All right, so how would the sample workout look like? So let's say we have a weekly workout and this is the uh, template of the one. So on Monday, let's say we start in the morning. So we, for example, touch type for 15 minutes and our goal is accuracy. So we try to make as, as little uh, mistakes as possible. Then we switch to, uh, to refactoring and we, for example, uh, we pick a small part of the source code and we practice uh, extract method. And we do that by hand, so we don't use IDE, we do it like all the steps required for extract method. And then we uh, revert our changes and do it uh, again and again. So if we do that like uh, the athletes do that, for example, as you would do push-ups, you could do like in five sets of three repetitions. So do it three times, then rest, and do it three times and rest, and so on, so on. So the, the numbers are only just to show you the uh, different ways of how, how you can uh, group your skills and uh, how you can group your exercises and how you can train them. So yeah, after refactoring, we rest for some time and we go to our Vim practice. So we also do five sets of three repetitions. And we, for example, pick a Vim Golf challenge and we do it for a couple of times and we can focus on different things. For example, do it in the least keystrokes possible on, or do it as fast as possible. So what it gives us, it just ingrains in our muscle memory the techniques that, that we want to use. For example, uh, for example, if you want to reorder two methods in Vim, you can do it in a lot of ways, like train one of, of, of those methods and, and see what happens. In a uh, in couple of weeks, if you train them, you should be pretty, pretty fast with that. And this thing uh, should be happening pretty automatically. So you could be spending little, uh, well, quite a lot of less time in your editor. So you can spend uh, much more time thinking, which is a good thing. Okay, so we go to Wednesday and we do touch typing for uh, 15 minutes, but now we focus on speed. So uh, we don't focus on uh, mistakes. We're just trying to improve our uh, typing ability. Then we go to uh, legacy code practice and we pick some technique of dealing with the legacy code, for example, Sprout class. Uh, if you don't know w what that means, it, you can pick a book of Martin, uh, not Martin Fowler, Michael Feathers, and dealing effectively with legacy code and you have all techniques uh, explained there. Yeah, so you pick some, uh, pick a technique and you practice it for uh, repetitions. And for example, you, um, then uh, you might go to, uh, to the third uh, exercise, which is programming kata. Uh, so you, you want to practice uh, to write a small program um, in a way that, uh, that it is perfect. So every step of, uh, uh, of your programming is really thought, uh, th thought through and, re and practice a lot so you can do it, uh, you can do it live. Okay, on, and on Friday you, you could have like uh, touch typing but right now focusing on some hard characters, for example, brackets. Can you touch type brackets quickly, as quickly as other uh, letters? If not, why not? <coughs> you could try that. Yeah, and, and other things. You could, uh, for example, practice some tell, don't ask principle by uh, 
picking part of the source code and trying to make it uh, compliant with this principle. So, and you do it for, for, as well for repetitions or you focus on speed or you focus on something else. It depends on your goals. And language mastery. You can pick a, a latest Ruby game challenge or you can pick uh, the puzzle from uh, Hack KRK, for example, and do that for repetitions. Or you can pick one from Pro Project Euler and try to do that in, in a language that you want to master. Yeah, so this is sample workout. So it doesn't need to look like that. It can be, for example, only touch typing if you want to focus on that. So, uh, well, to, to find an analogy uh, would be to, um, for example, if you go running for a half an hour, that is a workout. So if you touch type for a half an hour, that is also a workout. Okay, so we want to know when we accomplish a goal. So we n need to measure somehow Sorry for a second. We need to measure, what? <laughs> okay, we need to measure somehow uh, our, um, our progress uh, during execution of the exercise. So you can measure a time, uh, you can measure repetitions, you can measure time and repetitions, so how many times can you uh, do refactorings in uh, five minutes? Or how fast can you touch type the five pages of, of the text or something like that? And for some things uh, that are not really measurable, you can record yourself. For example, uh, if you record screencast and you want to present your ideas perfectly, so your programming flow is uh, pretty good and you can convey the meaning of wh what you want to say. Uh, you can record it, look at your flow, think of wh what you can improve and do it again and again. So th how, this is how you measure uh, those things that are really hard to measure in otherwise. Okay, all workouts need to be scaled to your needs. So for example, if you, if you are able to touch types only small case letters, uh, and with, uh, you can do it uh, with pretty good speed. You should not assume that you will uh, jump to this speed if you, like, uh, if you start typing uppercase letters or numbers or uh, punctuation marks. So find your level, uh, pick an exercise that is slightly above your level, do that exercise for repetitions, and then progress when uh, this exercise stops giving you the results you want. Okay, so when, where can we find ideas for workouts? Well, in a lot of places. For example, if you, can, if you want to master Vim, you can, uh, you can go to Vim Golf page, you can watch Vimcasts. I heard there, there was a quite good workshop two days ago. Have you been there? Yeah, a couple of guys have been there. So. Did you find it good? Yeah, great. So uh, pick those things that you learned there and do them for repetitions. So you don't need to think how to do them, that just your fingers would do it for you. And for mastering language, you can use a site like Rubicons, which is something like, mm, something like unit test for your brain. So you solve a sim uh, simple problem and you think about this problem, so you can also do it for repetitions. Uh, the Ruby game, you can pick challenges from there, Project Euler, Ruby Quiz, Katakas. This is a fantastic resource for, uh, to see other programmers working on uh, small programs and uh, be amazed how, how quickly can they do some things and how uh, beautiful their solutions are. You can also uh, buy a peep code screencast and play by play especially because then you could see some exceptional programmers at work like Gary Bernhardt, Aaron Patterson, for example, is not, not very f a fast typist, but it's a pleasure to, uh, to look at him. Okay, so there is a one more thing. One more thing to model after gym community which is a community. So it is 
um, it is really good to have a, a to have a community in your gym. Well, when you go to the gym and you see other people working out, you look at them and you think, for example, wow, this guy is bench pressing 100 kilograms. I should be doing that as well. So the community is, uh, provides you a com some kind of competition. It provides you some kind of support. For example, you see a large guy talking to you, oh, do one more repetition. So you do one more repetition. And you also can have a gym buddy. Gym buddy is a person who you, uh, with whom you go to the gym. So uh, his help, uh, he is helpful in times that when you don't want to work out, when there is a rain or your body aches or I don't know, you don't want to go to the gym. So he calls you and tells you, hey, bro, let's go to the gym. So we go to the gym. And also, there is a knowledge sharing, so you can, you can uh, share some exercises, share, share a way, uh, share workout templates, and share the ways to improve yourself. So, why not build a community? So, if you like the ideas, if you, uh, if you want to become a better developer, and if, if you think this, this is a the, the good idea, help me build one. So I started a project called Programming Workout. And if you go to the page programmingworkout.com, uh, you can leave your email, and I'll let you know wh when it's ready. Uh, well, I would like to start with uh, providing uh, sample workout templates, like for, e for three days a week, so like Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday. So if somebody doesn't want to uh, create his own workout, he can follow the, uh, s the one provided on the website. So it, it will always be free. That's, my, uh, that's something that I would like to become my hobby. And uh, in the future, it could uh, become a place to share workouts. It could become a place to uh, share ideas or discuss uh, the whole thing. And if we could manage to gather a large community, we could measure our progress and do it scientifically so we can uh, pick those exercises that work, uh, throw out those ex exercises that don't, and make a really, really good workout, really good way to become uh, developers. So if you like the idea, Contact me on Twitter, find this website, leave your email. Uh, if you want to discuss something, ask something, uh, just do that. So that's basically all I wanted to share with you uh, today. So uh, thank you for coming here. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them now. Yeah. Um, I just started using that a couple of days ago for like VIM shortcuts because uh -huh. I'm trying to get better with my VIM. And so um, that was the first thing I thought of when I saw this is like another really useful tool. So um, yeah, I was just curious if you had any thoughts or if you used that for anything before. Yeah, that's, uh, I haven't mentioned that because of a limited time. But yes, it's one of the perfect, uh, uh, perfect systems to learn knowledge, to learn like simple facts of the knowledge. So space repetition system, if you haven't heard about that, is the system to manage flashcards. For example, if you learn a language like, uh, like Japanese, English or something like that, you use flashcards. And if, if you have like 1,000 of them, it becomes really hard to manage uh, how often should you practice them. For example, if you know how to, uh, how to uh, speak how to say a word, for example, uh, good in, in English, which is dobre in Polish, and, f and you practice it. And it's a pretty easy word, so you learn it pretty quickly, and you don't need to see this flashcard as often as you would. So space repetition system manages this for you, and if you answer correctly a flashcard, you will see it like further in the future. So it's a perfect, uh, perfect uh, thing for practicing things like uh, like uh, what you said, like uh, Vim, uh, uh, Vim comments or uh, some shell comments or some 
some knowledge that can be put on the flashcard and exercised uh, consistently. So that's a, that's a really good pick. So yeah, I'm glad that, that you brought that up. One more question. So it was a nice pick about workout, but there was nothing about how to rest. Oh, you. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how to rest. Yeah. I mean, all those exceptional programmers that you met, how, how did they rest? <sighs> Yeah, how, how do you rest? <laughs> well, actually, I think that, for example, for programmers, things like computer games or watching movies doesn't work so well, like for other people, because you are still spending time mm -hmm. in front of computer. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe for some people, sports is okay, mm -hmm. but if sport doesn't work for you and you are a programmer, then I think your options are very limited. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's a that's a very good point. Well, the, the question was how to how to uh, rest. So basically, our workout is not physical. So uh, if we we work out our brains. So we we cannot rest with our brains being active, like by watching nine gag or playing games or something like that. Uh, so basically, what uh, what works for me is the physical exercises. So go out and do some real workout. And that would, be, uh, that would be the rest for your brain. So, and then uh, you can rest for, from your real workout by watching Nine Gag. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.